Hey guys, so I lost all my audio from this first section of the video, so I'm going to be voicing over for a little bit, but I'm going to show you how to go from nodes like this to a, a more full plant like this that will eventually grow into a big, full, beautiful plant. Um, I hope you find all of this information helpful. If you have any further information, please leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought of this. So with all that being said, let's just get into it. So first to prep, you're definitely going to want to clean whatever you'll be cutting your plants with. Honestly, I don't do this every single time, but it is definitely a really good general rule of thumb to do just to be safe. And then of course, take your cutting here. I'm just going to be showing you this with a good old golden pothos. So um, here you can see these brown bumps. Those are aerial roots, and that's actually where the axillary bud or new growth point will form. So go ahead and cut in between each of those. Um, take however many you want. I think I took seven of them. I could totally be wrong about that. Don't count. And then this is what you'll be left with. So you can always go ahead and propagate like this, but I actually prefer to take the leaf off. Uh, that just, to me, it seems like there's less matter that can rot or, you know, have issues with when it's in the propagation container you decide to use. So I go ahead and actually just carefully remove the leaf off of each of the nodes and the uh, growth point or the axillary bud, whatever, is usually underneath the leaf. So this helps make it a little bit easier for that thing to push out. Then, of course, you could have guessed I'm going to be using sphagnum moss because it's my it's my favorite substrate to use. So I just wet it uh, quite a bit so it's pretty saturated. And then I'll be using uh, my favorite plastic like saucer things that I put under pots and stuff. I will have linked down below. I really wanted to tell you that, I guess. And then I'll just take handfuls of the sphagnum moss, wring it out really well. So there's only like a few drops of water still coming out of it. And that's about the best way I can explain how wet it should be to go in your um, container you decide to use. Oh, you could also use like takeout containers, by the way. So yeah, I'm just going to add a little bit of this down to the, the bottom of this saucer. And I think these saucers are great for this because they are a little bit deeper than most other ones. Anyway, yeah, just pack it in there really good. And then make sure that when you're placing the nodes in there, the little brown thing or the aerial root as it is actually called, is touching the sphagnum moss and then try to keep the growth point more facing upward if possible although it's not totally necessary and then just push them down in there really well and cover it with saran wrap obviously if you use like a takeout container or something you don't have to do this step or even a propagation bin but this works very very well and i'm just going to put it in bright indirect light in my plant room and i'll keep you posted here are our little node propagations that I started a while ago. I'm gonna give you a little update on them. So they are growing quite well. They are starting to get new, fresh little growth points. Let's see, this guy's rooted. You can tell they're rooted if you give them a little tug and it won't move. Let's see, this guy's not rooted really yet, but you can see a fresh little white root coming in right there. This one, you can see that little white tip there is the start of a fresh root and it's also getting a growth point. This one has that growth point and a, ooh, quite a bit of root. Not fully rooted, of course. This one, for some reason, has like hardly any growth point progress and also no real root progress, which is a little bit weird, but you know what? Um, that's just the way it is with nodes. Like sometimes they grow faster than others, even under the same, you know, environment or situation. So if your plant's taking longer, don't worry about it. Just leave it sitting there for a while longer. Although I know it's so hard because it's exciting. Like you want new growth as fast as possible. This one is very well rooted and also has pretty good growth points. So yeah, the sphagnum moss is staying wet and I've only just checked it, I think twice in these past 20 days, like just in passing. And all I'm looking for is if the sphagnum moss looks dry. I don't even open it up every time because I kind of want it to self-sustain being closed, but I'll peek in and see if I can notice any signs of rot, which is like browning or blackening kind of mushiness on the plant itself. Yeah, that is a sign that it's either not getting enough sunlight or that your container is staying a little bit too wet and you can open it up and air it out. So just some things to look for. Let's see if we can see any roots on the bottom of this. Look, there's some root. Oh, I dripped some water. It looks like that's the only root we can really see right now. That's a pretty good one. So yeah, I'm really happy with this progress. All right, I will keep you posted. Oh my goodness, it's July 7th. So here is the final update on this plant that I'm going to be doing in this video. Let's go ahead and unwrap it. As you can see, it's pushed the growth points and the plants all now have new growths happening. Well, most of them, actually do all of them. 
All of them do, that's really exciting. And let's see what the roots look like. Ooh, we got some roots. Okay, I'm gonna pull them all out one by one. Show you. Check out what we have going on here. For four. Okay, so here are all of our little plants. So as you can see, they all do have roots. Some of them more substantial than others. This guy just has tiny little roots. Pretty much, it's kind of up to you when you wanna go ahead and plant them, but I typically wait until the growth point activates and they do have their first leaf before I go ahead and will repot. So that's kind of what I've been waiting for. Yay, they turned out so good. Now is when I would just go ahead and pot up the plant like normal. I do like to prefer to propagate like this because I, I think you get better looking more full plants this way. That's just totally my opinion. I just don't like taking, especially, especially if it's not going to be a top cutting, I'm not a huge fan of doing propagations by like cutting like that. Yeah, I just definitely think the plants come in nicer this way. So that's why I do it this way. Okay, now I'm just going to add soil to this little pot, which is what I'll be potting, putting our new little plants in. And we will be combining them into one plant. I'm going to fill it up till about here, and then I'll go ahead and add in the cuttings. Yeah, so just like that. You can see there's like about an inch and a half here of space. Now I'm just going to set the nodes very gently organize them in here nicely. Really, I, I do really, really think that this just leads to better looking plants, more full, healthy plants, um, rather than just taking straight cuttings with like multiple leaves. I don't know what it is. This is just totally my personal preference and you do it your preferences. I do have greater success this way. It's kind of I have a small little opening on this pot, so I gotta arrange them very strategically and not break the roots. I'm just kind of gently setting them in there so that the roots are just kind of resting along the top of the pot. I'm gonna try and squeeze this one right here. Like so. Okay, fill in around the plants and on top of the nodes. This is kind of a chunky mix. Oh, there's a rock in there, that's weird. Where did that come from? A little bit harder to fill in, especially because this opening is a little bit smaller, but yeah. And then in the center. Arrange them a little bit more so that they're not all, gosh, what's the word? Why can't I think of the word? <laughs> Tangled in the middle, okay. And right now I know this plant looks a little bit awkward and <laughs> a little skimpy and empty. Each of these new leaves is just going to continue growing like, you know, plants do, how they grow. <laughs> Give it a little bit of water. And it's going to become a full regular plant. I do know Costa Farm Farms propagates a lot of their plants this way. It's a really good way to be able to get the most out of your plant cuttings. So another example, I cut all of this long growth off my Syndapsis argyris, and each of these node nodes I'm gonna propagate this way and I'm going to get so many plants out of this. This is how I've been propagating for my shop and when I'm propagating my own little tiny plants that I wanna maybe make more full, it's a really great way to do that. Super easy and straightforward. Very little guesswork. <laughs> it's hard to mess it up, honestly. I guess while we're here in my plant room, I'll show you another plant. I mean, I have a few here, actually, I'll show you. Here we have some philodendron micans that I propagated this way. They were just propagated by node. I did leave the leaf on on these ones, but you totally don't have to do that. In fact, I prefer not to do that now. This was from, I mean, like, six months ago. I've kind of changed my strategy a little bit, but I do just think you end up with such better looking, more full kind of plants. I don't know, they come in healthier. Again, just my preference. And these are ones I've sold on my shop. So yeah, I mean, I've kind of been talking about if you are able to 
sell cuttings of your plants or sell plant propagations, like go for it because it'll drive the plant prices down. This is the best way to do it in my humble opinion. Of course, I'm not all knowing because again, like this is gonna be such a full plant for the same amount of cutting that like you typically would cut stick in water and then you'd have like one long strand. You get what I'm saying? Like, I know a lot of times people like to take, I'll use my skin dapsis. Oh, this one's just kind of leafless. Like people will take a cutting, pretend there's actually leaves on this, but they'll take a cutting and then just stick this entire cutting into water, let the bottom node root and then they just have like a one strand plant, which I think is really cute in a lot of cases too. But why not make that one cutting go more, more like lead to a more full plant instead of just the one vine, you get what I'm saying? By cutting up the individual nodes. Okay, I hope that's making sense. I hope what I'm saying is making sense. Okay, here's another really good example. So these are Monstera Oblica nodes that I am propagating this way. Look at how nice that one looks. It's already getting an aerial root and it barely has a growth point. So yeah, really, really awesome way to do this, honestly. 10 out of 10 recommend. And then I'm trying not to be too long-winded, but another example is a Monstera Deliciosa Albo. This bump right there, oh, I'll put an arrow, is the growth point starting to activate. So yeah, even just propagate your Monstera cuttings this way works really well. And I have great success with the Albo Monstera doing it like this. That's just another example. You can do it with literally almost any, any kind of plant. So don't be afraid to try. But yeah, that is it. That's how I propagate by node. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. Any further information, also please leave them down below. I hope this video was helpful, informative in some way. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next. Bye.